So today we have here with us Mr. Bhavya Verma and he's from this company called Taliho. I know that sounds a bit too funny but that's the actual company name. I also got to know that it was named as Taliho I think 40 years back? No, no. about, about 20, 20, years 20 years back. That a group of people just sitting together and they decided let's make a company called Taliho. It's just like a Taliho job. Yeah. So Mr. Bhavya please. Uh, could you give me an introduction about yourself? Yeah, so uh, I come from this city called Ambala near Chandigarh and uh, I did my hotel management from a college called IHM Pusa in Delhi. Started working with the core hotels back in 2015. I was a part of the pre-opening team at the Pullman at Aero City. We opened that. Started a bar there called Coin, if you know, you know. Uh, moved to Bangalore, uh, mm. worked with Marriott for about a year. Opened the raffles in Udaipur. Joined the Oberoi New Delhi and now I work for, for Taliho. Uh, I take care of, I'm basically a project manager based out of North India. I take care of training, education, okay. uh, creating new menus, concepts for, for consulting projects for bars and restaurants and hotels. And sustainability, I think, is one of my core philosophies as to as to what I do in terms of uh, being a part of this, this beverage industry. So yes. how do you describe sustainability in terms of liquor? Like how uh, does it work? So sustainability in terms of liquor is something I think probably is beyond my scope. But sustainability in terms of the F&B industry is something that I can I can define. There's three basic types uh, of how I like to, to break it down. Number one is mm. sustainability in the form of uh, not wasting produce. As in if you get something at your outlet, uh, it's a closed, it should ideally be a closed loop system. So in case I get, let's say about 10 kilos of oranges, I should not be producing any waste out of it because every part of that orange is something that can be use in one way or another in my operations. Uh, the second form is uh, just buying locally and sourcing sustainably uh, in the sense that I was taking a training uh, in Maharashtra and I asked these people, you know, where do you get your oranges from? So assuming, uh, you know, where we were, I thought the answer would be Nagpur, but it was Valencia. So we used to fly in their oranges straight from Spain mm. and, you know, just, just the environmental tax on that sourcing is, is a bit bit too much as you know people in the FNB space we sometimes forget the human element and the, the environmental tax that we're paying that's true for each item that we source third bit is just supporting your local communities uh, like a very good example is cobbler and crew down at Pune uh, you know they take care of their team, they take care of uh, Pune as a city, it's by people of Pune, for the people of Pune. So, the coasters are made from uh, hydraulically pressed waste products from the bar. Every dry day, the entire team goes out and cleans the city, you know, they use uh, discarded bottles that they buy from a kabadiwala under a bridge to, to store their syrups, etc. Which is even better because you don't have to make or manufacture more plastic. So, yeah, what definitely. you already have, you can start consuming that itself. Definitely. 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 You close the loop at the end of the day, right? Consumption will always happen and humans have a very good uh, track record of leaving waste wherever we go. You know, it's, uh, it's, that's, that's probably one of our defining features. So, were you always interested in the liquor industry or were you from a different industry when you started off? Because uh, I'm sure school mein topic nahi hota tha based on liquor. <laughs> Mere school mein tha. Well, not in, in the class, <laughs> but huh? army schools in general, <laughs> you okay. get introduced very early. Mm -hmm. uh, liquor has always been a big part of my life. Uh, you know, social drinking, as, as terrible as it is in the in, in our life it's something that's always been a part of uh, life for me uh, the, I remember the first inclination I had towards liquor was uh, I was with my dad and uh, I was about 17 years old very very young to you know have my first drink but he gave me my first drink and I asked him okay you know this is a whiskey it says XYZ number of years on the bottle what does that even mean uh, he could not answer my question and uh, I went to college and even my college could not answer my question. <laughs> and eventually with, with time, effort, parampara, pratishtha and anushasana, I've gotten to a point where now I know. It's just a very fascinating world of how, you know, we take God's produce and make something that's it's really fun. Like we have an Urak here. <clears throat> it's a, you know, it's a... And we might be the magic. only people to find an Urak in the rainy season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's a summer crop. Find sure. and also, yeah, yeah, summer crop, but, you know, it just speaks to sustainability of man. I mean, 
गॉड गेव अस द कॅशो नॉट अँड द कॅशो ऍपल वी मेड फेनी अँड ओराक आउट ऑफ दॅट आय मीन दे हॅव देअर ओन कम्प्लिटली ओन फकिंग चार्म सो इफ यू इफ यू माइट बी वंडरिंग दॅट व्हाई डोंट वी हॅव ग्लासेस ओव्हर हियर सो द आन्सर टू दॅट इज वी डिड हॅव ग्लासेस इनिशियली बट वी गॉट स्लॉस्ड वे बिफोर द शूट अँड वी थॉट वी थॉट चलो लेट्स लेट्स जस्ट हॅव अ डिसेंट कन्वर्सेशन नाउ वी हॅव द इंग्रेडिएंट्स बट नॉट द सर्विस सो हाउ फाउंड आर यू ऑफ रेसिपीज आई एम श्योर एज अ like a professional you might love making recipes since you also train people yeah yeah so what are the like the most fascinating recipes that you've ever made till now well uh, cocktails are very interesting because they take uh, you know so the fundamental difference between a bartender and a chef and why bartenders are never as creative as chefs is because a chef will never sell his raw material you go to a restaurant you order for a gajar ka halwa you don't order for khoya and gajar exactly but if i go to a bar i can either order a whiskey sir or i can order a whiskey and lemon juice on the side and an egg white and then you have the liberty over there yeah. in the bar so the bartender always has a crutch of uh, straight drinks which drives sales drives business at the end mm-hmm. of the day it's very important so when you're talking about cocktails it's truly an art form i mean you know it, it starts at anura and limka with Uh, you know lime and chili and it goes all the way to clarification you know b- using roto apps and uh, like in centrifuges and what not uh, the modern bartender is a scientist and probably one of the best uh, things i learned very early on in my career was that uh, you know previous knowledge is the best form of resource that you can undertake uh, so there's a few books that i refer to when i'm making drinks louder louder few books that i refer to when i'm making drinks uh, liquid intelligence the flavor thesaurus cocktail codex it's a combination of these three allow me to you know work beyond my own creativity at a lo- at, at many points of time uh, probably the best recipe i have ever made was this uh, so we took basically green melon uh, we infused that with some gin and uh, yeah camel's milk clarification of that camel's milk is a pretty intense uh, beverage on its own you should never have more than 60 ml of it but yeah that uh, clarify clarifying uh, you know gin and uh, green melon with that was a, was a pretty unique thing we did in udaipur so it it makes sense i mean so sure. <laughs> Uh, in, in the context of Rajasthan, that was a pretty interesting drink mm. to make. But perhaps one of the weirdest ones I've ever But how made. would you rate Udaipur as a market for liquor? Like, how's the footfall like? Uh, in December of 2021, uh, I sold about 270 bottles of Royal Salute in a month. Oh, nice. So, you know, the market is there. It's a very different kind of market. It's more wedding-driven, more event-driven. That's uh, true. The cocktail culture isn't there yet. It's truly unique. I mean, it's a very different market. Nobody marries like the good Jews, <laughs> like we were talking earlier. <laughs> Uh so yeah it's uh, you know new year parties where the mm-hmm. base level of whiskey that you can buy is a blue label is a real thing in udaipur it, you know it goes places that that market so talking about places. culture as a goa mein tradition hai feni ko ya fir ora ko limka neembu yeah. aur mirchi ke sath peene ka so i mean both of us are north indians i'm yeah. sure so what brings you here to goa like an ambala person into this landscape of the unfound land of goa i think i'm more indian than haryanvi so that's that's one thing <laughs> but yeah goa is always been very important to me personally like from a even a culture perspective i think mm-hmm. this is where my hotel and hospitality journey started there's a hotel in this it's in this state called uh, the club mahindra at varka beach goa that was the first hotel i ever stayed at uh so families uh, my family's members with club mahindra and we used to come here every year basically when i was growing up and that hotel was basically magic to me because how can you know that large an estate take care of people so well i learned finger painting there i played my first ever game of call of duty in that hotel so that hotel was always very important to me but i thought ke hotel ka point hota hai aap wahan raho lekin aap explore karo bahar ja ke call of duty wahan hotel ja yaar mere parents karte the explore and mere ko chhod dete the wahan pe to acha at to for you were under age that time yeah yeah for for a 9 year old it's it's oh oh for a 9 year old go exploration is just either that ya fir beach pe ja ke you know make a sand castle and and do shit but you know the uh, hotel was much much nicer that way so yeah, that was i think my that was my lick into the hospitality field mm-hmm. and then i love seafood i love i love goa as it is man i mean kings beer i've grown up on it 
man we um, we surprisingly do not find kings in goa anymore yeah so you we were circling around well. the goa market like uh, yesterday yeah, yeah yesterday and we came across only peoples i mean yeah. i know of a few places that sell this new brand called konings apparently i have heard that konings has overtaken or uh, rebought or i have no idea they've collaborated with the kings brand or something the bottling is more or less yeah. the same and the taste is also the same because the name is different it's pretty nice that you know the the entire community here has moved on from kings beer to now the peoples exactly people People's has overtaken like the market. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's let's. Uh, People's is now like at every go and bar, every yeah. go and pub. Like, छोटे से छोटे जगह पे भी आपको People's. Oh yeah, for sure, for like sure. The most local yeah. से local. I've I've been to liquor stores जहाँ Kingfisher नहीं थी and People's थी. So that mm. you know, speaks volumes. Yeah. It does. Overtake Kingfisher in this country. I mean. That's a great How USP that uh, Mr. Suraj Shanoi has. <laughs> <laughs> so how's it like working uh, working with Tali Ho? As in, like, were you? I mean, so it's an education related brand. So even yeah. I had to research about the brand quite a lot yeah. to get to know like what is this all about. Yeah. Um, And when I also speak to your uh, owner, Mr. Vikram Achanta, yeah, so he CEO. gave me a little bit of idea of what does the company do. But yeah. I had to read a lot about it just yeah. to get to know more about it. Yeah. So what's it like? I mean, is it similar to working for a bar or a liquor agency uh, like Diageo, Pono, and all these brands, or is it something different? It is a completely different ball game. Talio is a it's primarily an educational firm. Uh, we we basically certify some elders on how good they are. There's a course called the WICT uh, uh, program uh, based out of London. We are the official program providers for them in India. We're not the only ones, but we're the oldest one uh, in the country. Uh, you know, so they have different levels of certification in wines mm-hmm. and spirits as well. In fact, right now I am doing my level three certification in spirits. So in India, if you want to become a wine sommelier, you need the level three award in wines, which is like a base standard of how you gauge the 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 education level of a sommelier mm-hmm. in this country. So we provide that to platform. We also provide advocacy uh, services for for a lot of liquor brands. So basically, any liquor company that does not have brand ambassadors of their own, uh, you know, we tend to be the pseudo brand ambassadors for them. We go out to the market, we talk to the people, we engage their product with the uh, with the bartending community, and we also ensure that there's a level of goodwill maintained for them for all of our clients. Uh, the third vertical we have is experiences and uh, consulting, uh, which is you know one thing that we're trying to scale up now more, mm-hmm. uh, providing you know beverage philosophies, beverage uh, program. Programs, cocktail menus for bars, for chains. Like we recently did uh, a bar in Goa called the Barfly. We've also done the entire cocktail program, which is yet to be launched uh, for all of the toit, the three toit bars in uh, Mumbai, Pune, and Bangalore. So uh, you know that's one vertical we're trying to build. But primarily, it's about you know building a community of bartenders who know their craft and elevating the Indian bartending community further. So it's, I think it's been neglected for for five, far too long. It was. We're a 23-year-old organization. You know a lot of people still don't know what exactly you know uh, education in the bar world means and that's mm-hmm. something that's core for us to change that's true yeah people are just watching us like yeah. what the fuck are these two up to chhatale <laughs> 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 yeah chhatale ke the photography equipment pe baithe hain geere ho rahe hain talking about alcohol see now this is again sustainable yeah yeah so use your equipment about. yes <laughs> <laughs> if you're running out of stools use your fridge Exactly. <laughs> this is not the most comfortable place we're sitting at, but this is the best we could come up with. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when you're making recipes, I'm sure there are accidents that happen. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you go to make something brilliant that you already have oh, yeah. pre-planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It turns out to be a complete poison or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now that you say that, uh, so w- there was this uh, time on Halloween once. Upon, I don't, I don't remember the year. Mm. I was at in Delhi itself. I was at the Pullman, and uh, my director of food and beverage at the time told me to make a black colored cocktail. Now to make a black drink, you can use three things. You can either use Coca-Cola, activated charcoal, or soy sauce. So I decided brilliantly, why don't I make the darkest drink? I called it the darkest night. Right, uh, it was Coca-Cola, soy sauce, and uh, rum and sambuka. You know, on paper, the flavor thesaurus said that will work. I had it. Uh, I questioned my decision. Uh, What was it again? Life. Coca-Cola, soy sauce. <laughs> Coca-Cola, soy sauce, dark rum, and sambuka. What is a sambuka? Sambuka is this aniseed, uh, basically like a soft flavored liqueur. Okay. But it's, it packs quite, quite. So that was bunch. like your base spirit. Yeah. So dark rum and sambuka were the base spirits okay. uh, with Coca-Cola and soy sauce, equal parts of each. So it was like the worst Negroni in the world, basically. And uh, I mean, proportion-wise. 
But yeah, terrible drink, terrible drink. Uh, I decided from that day forward that if there is a cocktail that I am making, I will not make it on paper. I'll first bloody, you know, mix all the ingredients up and decide it because I, I thought, you know, it's a brilliant idea. And I was on a hot streak at that point. Every drink I made turned to gold. Mm. I went to my, you know, general manager. Three people are sitting in fancy business suits and I serve them this glass of poison. And, <laughs> and they have it and tell me, Bhavya, I think we made a mistake in your last appraisal. You put the coke in soya sauce. Dal de de. <laughs> In, in this country, I've realized if you're confident enough, you can sell anything. So I told him, mm. listen, this is Coke, Sambuca, dark rum, soy sauce, and this is a brilliant cocktail. It plays on the umami nature of soy and pairs it with the sweetness of Coca-Cola. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I turned into dragons afterwards with the amount of alcohol. And then it's never happened that you want to make something and make something else and it's become extremely extraordinary. Very rarely. Uh, But I'm I, sure there might have been a yeah. few. Uh, there was this probably one drink we made for uh, a bar, which I can't disclose a while ago. It was uh, so it was a musk melon and pomegranate shrub that we made. We clarified that with agar agar, uh, mm. paired that with an apérol and uh, and tequila, which turned out lovely. It was you know acidic. It was it was slightly on the fruit fruitier side because of the musk melon and pomegranate. But then the tequila gave it uh, that savory savory undertone. But uh, in my experience, uh, you know, miracles almost never happen. Uh, success is always measured. So if you're not, you know, if you don't set out with the right idea, if you don't plan your drink well enough, you won't strike gold. I mean, there are always two ways to look at it. Like if miracles happen or success is measured. <laughs> yeah, I mean, miracles I mean, could happen. I mean, you never know if it's a. M- I mean, I'm not being superstitious here. Yeah. But all I'm saying is, ki, let's say, ki, uh, Like yesterday, you were telling me about the cocktail. We're not disclosing any bar names here, but the cocktail that you made and you made a pre-batch and kept it in the fridge. Yeah. Someone kept it in the freezer. Yeah, it yeah. Turned out to be a complete accident. Yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. turned out to be. The yeah, but because I knew the flavors were right. The exactly. presentation of the drink. So you have to be calculated in your. Yeah, thing. yeah, for sure. If you don't, so if you're making a drink, start with a diagram. This is what I always do. If you don't know what the final product will look like. Uh, and what the story behind it is you can't make a cocktail uh, most true. bartenders in this country what they do is they you know make uh, they take 75 different ingredients they mix them together or three four ingredients and mix them together make a good cocktail and then they give it a name and then they write a story you know the first thing when a child is born you give it a name right and then that kind of sets it up for sets him or her up for life so you know uh, mr hemant pathak from uh, from junoon uh, the most one of the most legendary people in our industry told me this that start a cocktail with a diagram so I always, you know, sketch the glass. This is the color. This will be the garnish. Mm. This is the general direction where I'm going, and then it's easier for you to, for you to find your way, uh, while you while you're making your making mm. your drink. Yeah. Oh fuck! So oh, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Technical difficulties cut to rainbow screen. <laughs> okay. I'll just hold this. Yeah. Basically, you got heavy, heavy, heavy rainfall. It's like my chhata lapet liya chadar ki tarah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so, since you mentioned you grew up in an army school, so yeah. how was it like to choose hospitality as a subject? Oh, horrible! Uh, people used to judge me left, right, and center, man. I remember I was specially called into my principal's office, and they told me, "Bhavya, you we have taught you for twelve years. For you to do this, you have medical. You know, your parents are doc. Your father is a dentist, and you know you are supposed to do what your dad does, as is the norm in Haryana." Mm. So, uh yeah people used to laugh at me man ki kya hi karoge you know you're joining to waiter banega waiter banega and all that <laughs> now i have friends who even you know update excel sheets for a living and mm-hmm. here i am doing a podcast in this place <laughs> oh so, man I mean, yeah. <laughs> enjoying the fanny ride the urak i'm yeah. sorry yeah <laughs> i have fun i'm in school <laughs> it's pretty chill out here in the hospitality <laughs> sector <laughs> so it's like you chose to do hospitality and now all the people who are with you in school yeah. this could be like a statement to them like no in your face no 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 they're pretty nice people all they don't I'm talk to kidding, yeah. talk to any of them they're pretty nice people. but yes in your face a little we <laughs> just a little <laughs> but yeah i think uh, yeah the move from hospitality to liquor though was was fun i mean mm. i remember right before i joined tally ho my general manager at the obro told me i'm committing career suicide acha so that was fun <laughs> to, mm. to experience i think when you're in hotels they kind of keep you you know bound to that uh, sector and very limiting uh, mm, as, a, sure. as a career choice because hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants and bars hospitality is just the act of you know giving the act of serving it's it's everywhere and uh, what's better than alcohol right <laughs> absolutely much the best best part of it so okay. i think we should make a move yeah because And... otherwise flood aa jayega ha ha 
and it was a great podcast with you and yeah. got to know your story and had a lot of fun and let's yeah. have uh, carry on with another glass yeah definitely definitely because sure. you have to find the glass <laughs> for sure